I'm Randy and I make candy and today I'm making English toffee. Stick around. Greetings my confectionery cohort and welcome to Randy Makes Candy, where I help you make tasty treats that people love to eat. As I said, we're making English toffee today because a couple of you requested it. If there's something you'd like to see me make, please leave your suggestion in the comments below. By the way, I've always said that chocolate is good for your soul, but after I make this toffee, I'm going to tell you about a study that suggests that chocolate might be good for your heart as well. Okay, let's make this happen. First, what do you need to create this? Don't worry about writing it down, the ingredients and amounts are listed below. You can also find this information at randymakescandy.com. You'll need 220 grams of sugar, 30 grams of cold water to help dissolve the sugar, 32 grams of corn syrup, which helps keep the toffee from crystallizing and softens it a bit so it doesn't break your teeth. By the way, what time do you have to go to the dentist? Tooth hurdy. 200 grams of butter, 43 grams of chopped toasted almonds or whatever you want for a topping, 170 grams of chocolate melting wafers, one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract, and a dash of salt. You'll also need a sheet pan, a saucepan, a wooden spoon or a spatula, a glass bowl for melting your chocolate, and a candy thermometer. Now, I started out with a plain old glass candy thermometer like this one, which you can buy in just about any grocery or department store. They work just fine, and, and I used them for a long time, but for me they're kind of hard to read, so I finally bought myself a digital thermometer. This one's currently going for about 25 bucks on Amazon. I'll place a link to it in the description. I like it because not only is it easier for me to read, but it'll beep a couple of degrees before it gets to whatever temperature I set, then again when it reaches temperature. That way, I don't have to watch it continually. I can take that time and clean up a little bit or just do whatever. Temperatures can be critical when making candy. You should test your thermometer by first putting it in boiling water, where it should register 212 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Celsius. Let the thermometer cool, then put it in ice water, where it should read 32 degrees Fahrenheit, 0 degrees Celsius. If it's off a bit, adjust your recipe accordingly. If you don't have a thermometer, an old school method is to place an open jar of peanut butter next to your stove. Supposedly when the toffee is the same color as the peanut butter, it's done. This method's a little less controlled than I care for, but some say it works, so go for it. Okay, let's make some candy. Have all the ingredients ready before you start. You really don't want to reach a critical point and suddenly realize that you're out of vanilla or that you forgot to measure out the chocolate. Put the sugar, water, corn syrup, and butter in a large saucepan. This is going to increase in volume as it boils, and if your pan's too small, you'll have a really sticky mess to clean up. I speak from experience. Start on low, stirring until the sugar's dissolved, then increase the temperature to medium-high. This gradual increase helps keep the butter from separating out. Bring it to a boil, stirring occasionally with a wooden spoon or spatula, the more you stir, the less likely you are to burn your sugar. If you see the butter starting to separate, stir a little more vigorously until it's all combined. Once it starts boiling, place your thermometer in the pan. Be sure it doesn't touch the bottom of the pan to avoid false readings. Let the temperature come up to the hard crack stage, which is 300 degrees Fahrenheit, 149 degrees Celsius. Quick historical side note while we're waiting for the temperature to come up. In 1742, Anders Celsius created a scale for measuring temperature. For some reason, though, his scale had water boiling at 0 degrees and freezing at 100 degrees. It wasn't until he died two years later that the scale was reversed to the one that we're familiar with today. To make things even more interesting, the scale was reversed by none other than Carl Linnaeus, the guy who came up with the way we classify biological organisms. Once you've reached the hard crack stage, well, your candy, not you. If you've reached the hard crack stage, please seek help. Anyway, remove your pan from the heat and add vanilla and salt. 
Be careful when adding the vanilla as it may spatter. Pour it onto the prepared cookie sheet. You can either spread it evenly or just let it do its own thing. It doesn't need to go all the way to the edges. Well, even after all my hard work, uh, my toffee still separated just a little bit. But you know what we're going to do? We're just going to blot this a little bit and pretend that never happened. And this is all going to get covered up so nobody's going to know. It'll be our little secret. Don't tell anybody. Shh. At this point, you have options. You can let the toffee harden and dip the pieces in melted chocolate, or you can pour the melted chocolate over the top of the toffee to make a bark, which is what we're going to do today. Melt your chocolate either in the microwave or over a double boiler. For tips on melting chocolate in the microwave, as well as dipping tips, check out my video on how to make Butterfingers. Pour the melted chocolate over the toffee and spread it evenly. You can use an offset spatula like I am here, or you can use the back of a spoon or whatever. Sprinkle the almonds over the chocolate. Let it cool completely, then break it into pieces. And pieces can be any size you want. Okay, these are ready. Let's try one. Slanchava. Mm. If you like Heath bars or almond roca, you're going to love these. As promised, here's some interesting information from an article I recently happened upon. In a study performed at Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, Texas, analysis of more than 330,000 participants found that eating chocolate more than once a week reduced the risk of developing coronary heart disease by 8%. Researchers suggest that nutrients in chocolate may reduce inflammation and increase good cholesterol. Now, before you start getting too excited, the lead researcher did say that, quote, moderate amounts of chocolate seem to protect the coronary arteries, but it's likely that large quantities do not, close quote. So, moderation in all things, but it sounds like chocolate a couple of times a week could be just what the doctor ordered. If you enjoyed our time together, please like, share, and subscribe. Click the bell if you want to be notified when new videos come out. I'd love to hear about your results if you try this recipe, as well as suggestions for what you'd like to see in future videos. And remember, you catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. But now what do I do with all these flies? I hope you join me next time. Thirty grams or two tablespoons, no. 32 grams or four and a half teaspoons of corn syrup, which helps keep the toffee, blah, 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 which helps keep the coffee. <laughs> 200 grams of butter. Dang it. A glass bowl for melting your chocolate. And a, mm. in 1742, Anders Celsius created a scale. F blah, 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 blah. You can either spread it evenly or just let it do it.